Hello everyone, good to see you here again and welcome back to this course on discrete mathematics. We are into the last section of this course and today we are going to look at the reviews of discrete mathematics. We have three sections again, let us uh, start by just briefly reviewing what we have seen in the first part of this course. We started off with uh, number systems as well as the logics. Well, logics goes back even to 300, 400 BCs, even before that, because even the shepherds when they used to tend their flocks, they used to have certain logics, the way they count the number of sheep in their flock. Well, it all depends. There are different ways of logics have been developed along the way, but uh, in general, uh, people often go to this uh, philosopher, the Greek philosopher Aristotle as one of the person who started to have certain collections of rules for deduction and reasoning. From there on, we started to have uh, logical reasoning in a more logical way. Yeah, there have been lot of logical debates have been also developed uh, during that phase. So, from there on uh, we started off with this course with the uh, basics of certain logics, uh, especially we talked about the so called uh, Boolean uh, logics. And well, uh, after Aristotle there is a lot of uh, time left for us to come up with different ways of logical reasoning, but uh, we did not have a proper symbolic representation of logical reasoning until we properly had uh, Boolean and others came in. So, generally speaking in logic, uh, the form of argument is distinguished from its content. The logical analysis will not help you determine the intrinsic merit of an argument's content, but it will help you to analyze an argument's form to determine whether the truth of the conclusion follows necessarily from the truth of the premises. Did you get this uh, form? Well, let us say for example, uh, sometimes uh, if the program syntax is faulty or if the program execution results in division by 0, then the computer will generate an, an error message. Therefore, if the computer does not generate an error, error message, then the program syntax is correct and the program execution does not result in the division by 0. And there are a few more questions you can uh, rise on the way like uh, if the program execution uh, had some error message, uh, why, why does that happen? Like is it because of the division by 0 error or is it because of the program syntax? Well, if suppose there is program syntax is correct and uh, say there is no error because of the division by 0, but there are possibility that we do have other errors happening in such execution. Well, uh, that is the basic part. Well, as of this example is concerned, when the program syntax is correct and when there is no error because of division by 0, we can conclude that there is that is the case we have no error and uh, the program syntax is correct and if there is no error message we conclude that program syntax is correct and program execution is uh, there is no problem with the division by 0 that is the part that has been explained here. So, for this reason logic is sometimes defined as a science of necessary inference or science of reasoning we do have a conclusion, we make conclusion based on the results right. So, if the result is the program execution is correct, then we conclude that uh, we do not have an error because of the division by 0 or program syntax is simple logical reasoning. Hey, as I mentioned, uh, we did had a symbolic way of rep representation uh, when we started with this uh, say for example, uh, Bull, George Bull, uh, who initiated some of these works, and uh, we talked about propositions, uh, in which especially we talked about Boolean propositions. 
where it can take the value true or false. And we do have many forms to represent these uh, logicals and especially for Boolean logics of true and false and in line with the binary relationship that we talked about. Uh, we basically used the basic uh, logics and logical gates and or NORA as the basic gates and from there we developed a wider variety of uh, logics and eventually we came to certain conclusions. We draw conclusions like uh, propositions, uh, implication functions, contrapositive. If you recall all these stuffs, it all developed uh, from there on. As once we started to use symbolics uh, logics, symbolic logics in this kind of reasoning, uh, we can go for wide range of problems and then we can model it mathematically, symbolically representing these factors. In fact, uh, when it comes to these kind of logics, uh, D Morgans, he also contributed a lot like we talked about his uh, way of uh, changing uh, the natural logical reasoning with more uh, justifications we could say. Yes, uh, with his uh, thoughts there are a lot of justifications were made and uh, the logic had more concrete uh, way of reasoning. As we do, we do saw some of his uh, works like the formulas that you see here are one of these forms that have been very useful for us to determine such uh, logics. Let us look at this simple uh, logical uh, reasoning here. Say for example, you are about to leave to school. As you are about to leave for school in the morning and uh, discover that you do not have your glasses. You know the following statements are true. If I was reading the newspaper in the kitchen, the A part is if I was reading the newspaper in the kitchen, then my glasses are on the kitchen table. B, if my glasses are on the kitchen table, then I saw them at breakfast. So, 3 or that is C, I did not see my glasses at breakfast. D, I was reading the newspaper in the living room or I was reading the newspaper in the kitchen. E, if I was reading the newspaper in the living room, then my glasses are on the coffee table. So, the question is where are the glasses? Well, often we forget keys or glasses and lot of stuff we often miss. Let us try to use a simple a basic logical reasoning by means of using symbols and try to find or deduce the problem here. Where are the glasses? Let us say R k represent I was reading the newspaper in the kitchen, J k my glasses are on the kitchen table, S b I saw my glasses at breakfast. R L, I was reading the newspaper in the living room. G C, my glasses are on the coffee table. So, here is a sequence of steps that you might use to answer the following, I mean the above said problem. Let us use some of the rules of inference that we saw in the past and try to draw the conclusion for each step. This is very simple way that we often use in our day to day life for reasoning, especially like uh, we try to back track and see where did I kept my keys or glasses and so on. Let us try to use that similar logics and see what happens here. The first part R k in place G k by means of A. If you recall A B C D E, if you go back there A says if I was reading the newspaper in the kitchen, then my glasses are on the kitchen table, which means that R k implies G k. That is the part first part R k implies G k and G k implies S b by means of D. If you recall again, D is I was reading the newspaper in the living room or I was reading the newspaper in the kitchen. So, I was reading the newspaper in the kitchen that is what we said. 
So, G k implies S B. Therefore, by means of transitivity principle, we can say that R k implies S B. So, this is the first conclusion that we have R k implies S B. And uh, we know from C that we had the, I did not see my glasses at the breakfast. So, negation of S B. Therefore, by means of uh, we are given with R k implies S B and uh, the negation of S B is given. Therefore, negation of R k by means of modus tollens that is the reading newspaper in the kitchen negation of that not reading the newspaper in the kitchen or l or r k by means of d. So, that is what we just saw d is I was reading the newspaper in the living room or I was reading the newspaper in the kitchen. So, that is why we had or there and with this or we can conclude that negation of or k by means of conclusion 2. So, if it is that because by modus tollens we concluded negation of or k and if you know that or l or or k in this section there is uh, negation of or k. If that is a negation of or k then there should be or l right. The or l has to be true there. So, by means of elimination we conclude that therefore, or l because or l has to be true and we know that or k is not true by the conclusion of 2. Therefore, R implies G C. So, G C is uh, my glasses are on the coffee table R L implies G C. Uh, I mean reading the newspaper in the living room implies that G C by means of E. R L by the conclusion of 3 that is what we get and therefore, the newspaper the glasses are on the coffee table G C by means of modus bonus. We got this, well it is a simple logic that we have seen similar problems in the past. Just for you to refresh and review I am giving this. Yes, an argument is called sound if and only if it is valid and all its premises are true. An argument that is not sound is called unsound argument. At times we do have ambiguity in some of the languages, ambiguity in the argument. So, let us uh, I in fact, I will also go through that part of ambiguity in a short time now. Before that we will just briefly see what is this Tarski's world. Tarski's world is a computer program developed by the scientist uh, John Barweis, John uh, to help the teach the principle of logics and they attributed uh, the name as Tarki's world because uh, to credit give the credit to this famous scientist Alfred Tarkis. So, the program of task Tarski world provides the picture of blocks of various sizes shapes colors which are located on the grid. Let us look at a simple example here. So, you have a grid and you have a lot of uh, colors as well as the shapes. These are used to represent certain logics or uh, here is some basic thoughts on this logical operations. Uh, for example, in this two dimensional version of the notation such as the triangle of x means x is a triangle and uh, blue of y means y is blue and uh, right of x comma y means x is the right of y. Uh, individual objects can be given names such as a, b, c, d. So, we have given some names here for this particular blocks that we have. Let us try to perform simple operations on this. Uh, Let us say uh, we are try we are asked to determine the true or falsity of such uh, of each of the following statements. The domain for all variables is the set of object in the task is world that is just shown here. A for all t triangle t implies triangle B. If you recall here we do have triangles here there are three blue 
color triangles and there are like uh, three squares of which two are black and one is blue. Let us go more for all x b of x implies triangle of x that is blue of x implies triangle of x for some value y such that square of y and the right of d comma y for some value z such that square of z and gray of z. So, simply stating this let us uh, go for one by one for a for all value of t triangle t implies blue blue of t. So, this statement is true as yes, all triangles are blue if you recall there all triangles that we have there are blue therefore, the if there if it is a triangle then it is a it is going to be blue for all triangle t implies it is blue. Then coming to b uh, which is for all x blue of x implies triangle of x this is false as uh, a counter example note that E is blue and it is not a triangle here it is E is blue and it is a square it is not a triangle therefore, this statement is false. C statement. So, this statement is true because E and H are both square and D is their right. So, if you look at here E and H E and H both are square and they are and D is there right. Can we rightly conclude that? Yes, D is on their right that is the gray circle and uh, D for some value of z such that uh, square of z and gray of z. So, this statement is false as all squares are either blue or black. You can see here all squares are blue or black therefore, that statement is false because it says uh, square and gray. So, that is a simple way to represent by means of these blocks and in fact, uh, many have found certain principles behind this way of representing symbols and logics and in fact, reasoning and deducing conclusions by means of such uh, thing is quite interesting and it is a quite an uh, original way of reasoning things. Let us uh, go back to this ambiguity. We talked about this ambiguous language. Yes, uh, when it comes to ambiguity, uh, when a statement is stated, at times it is kind of vague or fuzzy and ambiguous. So, things may not be clearly seen. As we have seen here in this picture, uh, if you look at this picture, uh, do you see a young woman? or do you see a old lady? Yes, uh, just there is a small hint there as you see the mouth of the elderly woman is the necklace of the young woman. As if the young woman is just looking sideways, she is looking sideways uh, whereas, the old woman is just looking down right. So, it seems a young woman has a kind of hat or on her head. Well, as you can see uh, different people have different perspective and once you see things from your view like for example, if you once you see the uh, world woman even if I say you could have a chance of looking at the young woman it is very hard to come back and see that young woman as your view every time. You cannot see both at the same time, but at times you feel that it is still the old woman or some people have still confusion is it old or the young woman. Well, the both can be seen from this picture. That way there are times when a statement can give us such ambiguity and with such ambiguity we often get a little bit distracted or confused, but with certain logics we can overcome such, such uh, problems. Let us uh, look at this simple mathematical trick, it is a simple uh, generalizing 
of a generic model. Uh, say for example, if you are asked to pick a number and add 5 to that number, multiply by 4, subtract by 6, divide by 2 and subtract twice the original number. What is going to be your result? As your result is going to be 7. Well, whatever the number is, whatever the number you have picked initially, say you pick up any number, it can be any number. So, in this example, we are stating that uh, the number can be x and you are adding 5 to that and you are multiplying 4 with that, subtracting 6, dividing by 2, then subtracting twice the original number that is twice is the minus 2, minus 2 x that results in 7. Every time you do the same, you always get the value 7. So, next time you ask your friends uh, and ask them to pick a number and why do not you try this uh, model. Well, likewise we do have lot of other ways and logical uh, reasonings and this is one of the principles uh, we see here that gives us this formula for sum of n numbers. It is about the story of this uh, great mathematician called Friedrich Gauss. And he was given a problem of adding numbers from 1 to 100 uh, by his teacher when he was a young child. And uh, probably the teacher wanted to get some time for herself to do her work, but she was dumbfolded or surprised to see young Gosh has just finished this problem very quickly. And later on uh, when he was asked how he, he was able to do this, he came up with a certain logic on how you, how he sees the numbers. For example, like uh, when you have these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, say 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 97, 98, 99, 100. So, that is the part when we had uh, this sum of adding sum of all these numbers. So, as you proceed with such uh, addition of all these numbers, a certain logic he was trying to uh, use to come up with. So, his logic is quite a simple way of uh, reasoning. Say for example, he is trying to view all things as a pair all things as a pair of numbers. So, as we look into these pairs, we see that there is more to it. So, as you add these things, you always get uh, 1 0 1 and you if you try to add all those stuff together, you get uh, 50 1 0 1. So, that is the simple principle from which he has come up with this formula of n into n minus 1 by 2. And this is uh, basic idea n into n plus 1 by 2. So, when I say n into n plus 1 by 2, that is the basic uh, thought that you have for uh, finding the sum of uh, n numbers. And this is a very simple logic. So, whenever you come up with such logics, and you can go ahead and uh, try to find the same similar ideas. And uh, at times I have found that uh, some mathematicians they use a simple logic like this and their logic is like just take up all the values that add up to numbers as 100 itself. For example, if you take up if, if you take out this 150 separately and then you have the remaining numbers there uh, which gives us the result of what you are about to uh, see. So, here uh, that is how this idea comes in 
and this idea is quite uh, effective while he talk about such uh, reasoning. So, whatever may be the principle that we are being trying to find, uh, the basic idea behind those principles are quite essential for us to come up with a certain problem and certain solutions as well as certain formulas, which we can generalize for any common scenarios. So, this is one of the thing and then if you talk about this so called, uh, it looks like a pakoda right, it looks like the so called a pakoda and it is one of this famous uh, problem people have come up with uh, that is based from uh, Vietnam and uh, there they have this complex uh, problem where you have to shift all these uh, disks from one pole to another pole and you may move only one disk at a time and a larger disk may not rest on top of a smaller one at any time that is the problem. So, the complexity of that would increase if you have more number of disks. So, here we have three and uh, here is the solution for which you have four disks. Step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4 has been detailed out here. So, as you can see here, so from this you can see it takes 15 steps for you to completely transfer all these uh, disks or pegs from one pole to the other pole, the first pole to the third pole and this problem is called the tower of Honai. And here is their uh, complexity, so basically you need to have such a number of disks and such a number of moves. For example, for 4 disks you need 5 moves, for 5 disks you need 31 moves. So, as you can see here uh, basic uh, logics can be developed from this is very simple like you have 2 power n minus 1, where n represents the number of disks in this example. So, the operation that has been developed there. Yes, uh, today we have seen some simple logics and uh, simple review of materials that we have seen in the past and this can give us some idea of there are a lot of things to be explored and a lot of scientific advancement that have been made in the past or still been used today, which means that even today there is a hope for us to come up with more advancement. I am looking forward to have the second review part soon with you in the next lecture. Until then have a good time and see you goodbye.